listen, the one mistake I mustn't make is talk media to a media audience, right? When I see old friends like Vinita and Vikram Sakuja in the audience, I can't tell them like, you know, the naive questions I ask them in their presentations, I can't ask them here. So I said, let me take a step back. And you know, the thing in all of this is, it's always good to get a sanity check. So I spoke to my marketing team and said, guys, what do you think I should say? And the lovely thing in our organization is, you know, they tell it like it is. They said, boss, please don't give motherhoods like digital is the future, consumer is king, you know, uh, creatives must like always win and so on. Why don't you just take a step back and say, listen, in this changing world as a marketeer, as a business uh, owner or a business head, what is it that's changed over time and what hasn't? And, you know, uh, they also recommended, since you're a cricket enthusiast, why don't you just make it simple and use some cricket analogies? So what I'm going to do over a short period of time really is, you know, clearly it is a changing world. Media consumption habits are changing in many ways. And it's clear that, you know, uh, these days the battle is not just getting people in the hall, but getting them to listen to you in the hall when they have their mobiles with them. I don't, I don't think this is working, huh? I have to point it somewhere. Oh. Sh should I go again? So, and clearly, even when you caught watch content, really the question is, how do you watch it? And let me share some thoughts and analogies, as I said, from cricket. Now, clearly, we're in a T20 world, right? And I, I also saw a very interesting part of the program which said, you know, going to the IPL, what's going to win? Is it going to be TV or is it going to be digital, so on and so forth? Really, one thing is inescapable that cricket has moved, though, you know, uh, older fellows like me are still great test match fans, but clearly it, the world has moved to the T20 format. That's what the consumers decided. And really, therefore, I thought, let me look at what are the principles that won't change irrespective of whether cricket moves from test match to T20 or otherwise. I think it all starts with understanding and knowing your consumer. I know it's a little bit of an adage, but every time I look at great work, great marketing work, not just great advertising work, I think the centricity first and foremost is the understanding of the consumer and why she does what she does. It's fascinating, the same thing holds now in cricket and I, you know, I had the occasion to actually meet with one or two of these analysts of cricket teams and you'll be amazed at the kind of analysis they now do on every opposing player, what, the kind of data, and you know, I've given an example here of uh, Dhoni. I mean, you know, some of us who've been cricket fans, if you listen to Dhoni's little comments on the stump mic, you will know that he's actually got a much better understanding of his opponents than most of the captains have ever had. I think for us as, you know, industry captains, the same thing applies. Consumers who under, brands and marketers who understand the consumer journey and where it happens, I mean, I'll give you a small example from my Cadbury days. Conventional media or conventional wisdom in chocolates is it's a younger person's product. You know, can we move it from 16 to 25 to 25 to 35 and it's great. Now, globally, what we found was actually grandparents were the new children. This over 65 audience, which incidentally in developed markets is much bigger than the children's audience were actually behaving like their grandchildren. They now had, you know, basically accomplished a lot of what they wanted to accomplish in life. They also had good income. And they spent a lot of time actually consuming media. Normally, the thing with Western countries is uh, they all eat early and by 7 o'clock, therefore, they're watching stuff and around 8, 8.30, they like to have a sweet snack. We introduced a brand called Marvelous Creations and everybody laughed and said, listen, why will you introduce a children's brand for grandparents? Because the brand had popping candy, it had gems in it, so on. So in fact, it was also tried in India where it did well, but with children. 
but internationally it was one of our biggest successes over a three year period and the brand did 500 million dollars in its first year of you know operations simple thing of understanding the consumer and keeping the consumer at the center i think something that all of you would know i think this is something again sorry this is gone I think you have to just press and wait. Just do it from here. I'll tell you the slide. I mean, there are very few slides anyway. Let's go to the next slide. Next slide, yeah. And I mean, don't worry, you stay wherever you want. Really, it is about, therefore, A, making an impact. Just go back, please. Just stay here. Okay, so let's reboot. Really, it is about not the number of impressions, but the impact. And I always give the idea, I always give the example of this famous Fevi Quick ad, which we ran once during an India Park match, which is about these two rangers at the border who, like, you know, one guy's shoes come apart uh, for want of time. I won't show you the ad, but uh, we ran that ad once. And the fascinating thing is we got recall over two, two and a half years. We also got recall in places like parliament where question, you know, parliamentarians asked about the ad, so on and so forth. So clearly, a lot of times, and I give the same example, look at the figures of somebody like Callis, and you will realize that he was probably the greatest all-rounder that has played the game but never been recognized. Coming back to the impact rather than just the numbers. Next, yeah. And again, as far as innovation is concerned, I, again, an adage, I'm sorry this is going up and down, but uh, innovation is something that it doesn't matter whether it's cricket with, whether it's the, the dusra or the reverse sweep, or whether it is, I still remember, and it gives me goosebumps even now, in Cadbury, when we had the Cadbury incident, the famous worms incident, at that point of time, one of the greatest these things was, how a lot of media personalities actually of their own won't came and supported the brand and supported it via small, small innovative things on live television, which really, in, in a sense, gave the brand the credibility that it required to get back. Let's go forward. And of course, I think Sam made this point in his advice to advertisers. One good idea is good for a little bit of time, but it's being consistent that builds brands and you know I wanted to just pick up I mean why pick examples only from uh, your industry or your companies a small brand like Kent I just think the consistency of Kent and I had occasion to visit a electronics retailer about a month back and that's where I got this example from the person said listen in water purifiers yes it is still aqua guard but I must tell you now top of mind is Kent Somebody who's just been consistent, Hema Malini has stood there time and time again and said the same thing. There is something to be said about consistency. Good, you know, as I've always maintained that advertisers and advertising agencies tire of the brand far before the consumer does or tire of the creative far before the consumer does. I think some of these are great examples where the consumer keeps rewarding you while the marketer or the advertising agency wants change. Let's go forward. Now, how has technology changed media? We all know this. Let's go forward. I think the first thing that is really fascinates me, is, and I can understand, Sam, when you say that digital is the future. Because in categories, you can now see that technology and, uh, and data can really aid your marketing strategy. If I want to test a new product for new home builders in Kanpur, I can now do that very, very successfully. Something which was unheard of a few years ago, or and many years ago, you know, fellows like me, when we were product managers, media was very complicated because we had to decide between DD1 and DD2 and Times of India and Hindustan Times. That was really the choices we made. Everything else in life was, you know, far easier. So now looking at today where you see that actually technology and data, and if you look for it hard enough, you can really target, test, pilot, and then scale up. And I still agree what Tam, uh, Sam says. 
once you've proved your pilot, then mass TV is still the quickest way to build the brand. But I think the ability to experiment, the ability to keep fine-tuning your whole you know, mix, today the opportunities that it gives you were never available earlier. Let's go forward. I think the need for adaptability is as strong as ever, you know, I purposely put those photographs. There was a set of cricketers who adapted to T20 and some who didn't, right? Even, even this year, poor Joe Root, who's, you know, and if you meet some of my English friends, they will still believe he's the world's best batsman, but nobody bought him for the T20 tournament even this year. Now, I think it's something to do with adaptability. Uh, you see, similarly going forward, you look at brands and their adaptability, and again, to actually pat my marketing team, because believe me, I had very little to do with this. One of the challenges I gave our marketing team was, listen, how Fevicol is a very well-known brand. Fevicol is pretty much an adjective in India today rather than the name of a brand. How do we make it a buzzy brand? How do we make it a much younger digital brand? And the kind of stuff that we've done over the last like three or four years, you can put one, you can click it once. Yes. You will see that, you know, for example, the famous Ronaldo tweet when we put the Fevicol can instead of the Coke bottle. The, it was actually trending. If you actually went to Coke, you saw, you know, if you did Coke on Twitter, you actually got the Fevicol tweet. Now, this is again an example of brands adapting, keeping the core the same, but not being afraid to experiment, not being afraid to push the envelope. And I think today the need for adaptability and the need for, frankly, experimentation is far, far greater than it was earlier. Let's go forward. And of course, I mean, you know, having two now not so young kids, but still I consider them kids. When I see media consumption with my two children, I realize that we live in a very, very different world from earlier. I never knew there was something called a non-celebrity, you know, social influencer until like I started following some of these people and, you know, thanks to cues both from my children and my media agency. What really bombed me was actually the top 10 non-media influencers still have a larger reach on social media than most of the OTTs put together. Now, this is something which has changed. I mean, it is clearly not about what you tell the consumer about the brand, it's what consumers tell each other. And I think brands that recognize that will remain relevant, will remain brands of the future. Brands that don't will, over a certain period of time, become a little jaded, I would suggest. So really, therefore, in summary, let's go forward. Something that all of you know, maybe the fourth one that I'll add is how things, uh, what will never change, I think the fifth thing I'll add is, irrespective of what presentation you do, technology will always like, you know, give you some amount of trip-ups. But it doesn't matter, that's all part of the game. So really, when I take a step back, my, you know, simple one-liner at the end of you is, experiment, innovate, know your consumer, and most important, don't be afraid of failure. Thank you so much.